I've been doing some eco printing lately and thought I would show you how that's going. Um, it's usually kind of hit or miss for me, which I'm fine with because even if there's things that like don't print real clear or you don't get any color, they're still kind of cool. They make cool blobs <laughs> and I like the cool blobs. So yeah, I'm just kind of good with however they turn out. And uh, I'm, I'm using, okay, here's what I'm using. I, I don't have a single tree or shrub or flower bed in my yard. So all I have are the plants that I buy to put in the pots on my porches. And I will go to usually Walmart or sometimes Lowe's early in the spring and I'll buy mostly annuals, just you know, little flowering plants to put in my pots just for some pretty color. And then those are what I use to do the eco prints. Nothing special, nothing fancy, just whatever was on sale at the time. And then just about a week ago, I was in Walmart again, and they had a bunch of their annuals on clearance. Because, you know, this time of year, nobody wants to plant annuals. Because, I mean, I personally don't even like going out there and watering them. I'm just barely willing to keep them alive. Really, the only reason I'm keeping them alive is so I can do this to them. <laughs> so I got some. They were in pots, like this big around, kind of tall pots. They were a dollar. And this was a week or two ago, and they're still, you know, they're beautiful. They're still flowering and doing their thing. But, oops, excuse me. I think um, Walmart is just, you know, phasing them out because they're not selling much anymore. This is a really good time to hit up your favorite nursery or wherever you buy plants and flowers to see if they have any on sale. And as long as they look like they're at least producing leaves, if they've got blooms on them, that's great. But, you know, I'm like, oh, they still got leaves. That's good enough. It's just a whole dollar. So, yeah, a lot of these are just um, dollar plants and flowers. And as we do this, I'll try to tell you what they are. Sometimes, honestly, I don't know. I don't pay attention to the names. I don't particularly care. Um... And I don't really want you to get too hung up on trying to go and find exactly what I used. I just want you to use what's available to you. If it's in your yard, you know, hey, that's great. But if you're like me and you don't have anything in your yard to print with other than grass clippings, then just go find something inexpensive, you know, just some, some whatever plants to use to print with. Don't spend a lot. Because this is just, you know, you're doing this for fun, if you're like me. Um, plus, I don't really, I'm not real knowledgeable about all of the, the mordants and, you know, how to do this and that. I'm just putting cuttings between sheets and sticking them in a pot and whatever I get, I get. This is fun for me. So, yeah, so don't worry too much about the exact plants that I'm using, y'all dead leaves off of your flowering plants, you know, sometimes the leaves, if you forget to water them, or you just completely don't water them because it's too hot outside and you really don't care, that's where I'm at, <laughs> then some of the leaves kind of die. Even dead leaves can print. <laughs> Again, you may, you may not get great color out of them, but I don't really care. I just, I just like to have blobs on paper that I can use for whatever. And I've been doing them kind of in book form already. So, you know, I've got a piece of watercolor paper for the cover. And then two sheets of, this is just cardstock. Not even heavy cardstock. Just regular white cardstock inside. And then I, I lay in my little cuttings and then bundle it up like this. And so when it's done, I've got this, like I can make this a whole little book in itself or put some together for several signatures and because they're all the same size and the pages just kind of um, because the nature of the pages it's just a perfect little cover with sheets because I'm using this is the watercolor paper pad I'm using just inexpensive got it on Amazon 
and it's nine by thirteen. Oh no no, nine by twelve. So it's a little bit bigger than just this is the cardstock, which it's actually on a bigger sheet, but I cut it down to eight and a half by eleven. So this is regular eight and a half by eleven. This is nine by twelve. So see, it's a little bit bigger. Okay, I will get to you in a minute. My goodness. Um, let me, um, yeah, there, let will just turn that off. Okay. When you cut them down, I just cut them in half like this and then fold the halves in half. So, see, this is my um, watercolor paper, half and then fold in half. And then this is the cardstock and it just it, see it fits inside it perfectly so you don't really have to measure <laughs> it's not hard so that's what i'm doing i'm gonna go out right now and just um clip off some little some leaves and some blooms i usually wait till the blooms are kind of droopy and you know they just need to be clipped off um and stems and yeah I'm just gonna go gather I'm gonna go gather and then we will come back and um, put this together and then I'll show you my current method for eco printing be back now I have pulled off some uh, trimmings off of my little plants and flowers you know some were like dead half dead some are still kind of okay you know not really particular just pulled pulled stuff off and what I'm gonna do first is I have this little dish and some alum and I've done this several different ways I've used several different mordants this and there, there is, okay, Rosemary Morris, you got questions about this, go ask her. I'll put a link to her channel because she knows everything. And, you know, she can tell you exactly which mordants to use with which plants to get which results. And she knows that. I don't. I use either alum or vinegar because that's what I have in my house. <laughs> and lately, I've been liking the results that I get from alum, which you can get in the spice section at your grocery store so I'm gonna put I don't know how much I'm supposed to use but this is what I've been using see that's probably about a tablespoon or so of alum in here and then I'm gonna put maybe fill it up maybe halfway with some warm water and stir it around just enough to melt the alum and this will be the mordant that we use. I have, sometimes I pre-mordant my papers. These have been soaked in alum with water and then left out to dry, so they're already mordanted. Is that a word? I don't know. So anyway, you can do it that way. This is what I prefer. So I am gonna go um, dissolve my alum in some water and I'm also going to put my pot on to boil. I steam my uh, papers these days. You can completely submerse them and boil them, or you can steam them, and I've just been using the steaming method lately. I've got this pot that I got for, I think, two or three dollars at a thrift store flea marketplace. It came with a lid. You know, I have more than gotten my money's worth on this. This is the pot that I'm using. And I've been putting this little rack in the bottom. Um, like that. I think this came with my air fryer. And I don't ever use it in my air fryer. But it's perfect for in here. And then I put water till it's just below the bottom. It's not touching the thing. It's just below the bottom. Bring it to a boil. And that's how I steam. If you don't have this, you can use a steamer basket. If you have one of those metal ones that opens, you know, like a flower. <laughs> you could turn it upside down and then just um, set your uh, papers on top of the legs of the steamer basket. Or I've made little wire racks. Just do whatever it takes to make some kind of a steamer for your big pot. Um, 
and then I'm going to um, yeah go ahead and get that boiling so that once I have my papers ready it's all ready to steam and go so I will be back in a sec now I've got my alum water all ready to go and my little trimming things and like I said I don't know what half of these are called and it doesn't matter you can see this one it all its little leaves died but I'm gonna pull these off and I'm gonna put them in my alum water and this stem I'm not gonna put in there because it's kind of hard super hard and really hard you know woody type stems um, it, it's really easy to poke a hole in my cardstock so I don't want those if it's a soft stem then yes that's fine but I don't want the uh, really stiff ones these these do really well sometimes I'll get color out of them sometimes not this is a begonia it's one of those fluffy begonias I don't remember what it's called but anyway I'm just gonna put it in there this is a Clarence rack um, Gerbera Daisy I got two of them they were a dollar that's a good price for this kind of plant the stem is not it's pretty flexible so I think it'll be okay and you can see it was it's kind of it's tired it's experienced <laughs> And I, these are hit or miss. Sometimes I'll get a really nice print out of them. Sometimes not so much. But they're good. This is off of the plant that makes these flowers. And I don't know what it's called. But it must really like where I put it. Because it's just beautiful. The leaves are beautiful. Except for this one. And that, I don't know about that stem. That stem might cause me problems. So I'm going to snip that off so that this will lay kind of flat. Um, but the the blooms of that do really well and they can kind of be this is kind of dimensional which can cause a problem with my cardstock so when I put it down I'm going to kind of squish it flat and the stem is really flexible and it doesn't have anything poking out so I'll leave some stem on it and just soak that in there and so this is what I do I just go through and put my little uh, plants and flowers in there. Let me, let me show you what else I've got. I don't know what this is. I think this is a perennial that I bought. I have this big cauldron out front and uh, it made really pretty uh, pink flowers in the spring but now it's it doesn't bloom anymore. It's done with its blooming cycle but the the green part is kind of reddish purplish on the end so it's still really pretty. But there's a lot of it so I've trimmed off of that I don't know what these are but these are fun <laughs> this was another <laughs> it was a dollar and it's still going like crazy <laughs> so I'm getting a lot of use out of that one I've got a fuchsia plant that makes you know those kind of flowers these do really well yeah they usually get good color out of those and oh this one know what that is it stems kind of hard so I'll probably pull these little red things off and it you know it made some that were this tall earlier in the year and now it's just like struggling to put out these little ones but that's okay these this is um, I think yeah this is part of a I have well that's okay I'll just use the petals <laughs> Um, and these leaves came off of that too. It's a um, it's like an impatient plant, but it's called a sun patient. And it's impatients that can grow in the sun. And I have a couple of those. Those I got one of those on the clearance rack too. And then there's some dead. I forget what that came off of. But okay, this is what I've got. This is what I'm using. I'm just gonna kind of you know trim off the parts that I don't need and put them in my little bath here and like this okay and even see this has nothing going on but I could use put this down and then put some loose petals around it so that it looks like a little flower so I'll put that in there 
and then that one I can keep like it is. I don't think I, you know, my book's not long enough for all that stem, so I'll cut that off. And this one, just stick that whole thing in there. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna keep going till I get all of these soaking in their little their little alum bath over here. And then we'll start assembling our pages. Now I'm ready to put my little book together or to you know get my plants on it. So what I'm gonna do is start with the water paper color color cover uh, piece and then I will need something on each side so I'm gonna choose um, that little thing over there and I don't know maybe there's some rando petals and I think I want this one I don't know about that stem I'm gonna kind of squish it and give it a try. Hopefully it won't poke holes. There's one of those dead leaves. Um, you can, you know, make an arrangement that makes sense or just put stuff down to print. And that's usually what I do. I just put stuff down to print. Okay. And another little leaf. There we go. And now my, this is the cardstock sheet so I'll put it over kind of press down just to make sure nothing pokes a hole through because I don't want that here's a nice leaf on one side and then on the other I think I will put this thing sometimes I separate it sometimes I just use the whole thing Kind of squeeze any sticky outy parts so that they're flat a little bit. Now this is the last page, so I only need one side here because I'm going to fold it in half so it'll print both sides. So I will use one of my begonias. I think I'll separate it. Yeah. Put that blob there, and then I don't need that stem. That blob there, and then maybe some leaves for them. Um, this one. There we go. And now fold up my little bundle. And that is ready to go. I've got two more over here that I already did. And what I do is I stack, I use about three together. I put something between each one so that it'll print on this side of the covers. A leaf is good or, ooh, look, let's put one of these fuchsias right here because I usually get pretty good color out of that. Put a fuchsia there. Put this on top. And then you can take a longer piece of watercolor paper, or this is suede text paper, or uh, craft text if you have some of it. It's just, you know, super duper waterproof paper. And I just make a little bundle. So I need something on the back of this one. So I'm going to lay down here. This leaf is easy. Put the leaf down. Put this here. Yep. Whoop. Don't need to clip those together anymore. So I've got leaf bundle, leaf bundle, flower bundle. And then on top of here, I'll put something else. Put maybe another one of these. Put that here, like so. Squish it together, and then fold this over like that, and then just use some kind of clips. And this way, I don't get clamp marks on my actual pages. 
you know, all the clamp marks get on this one. I'm going to clamp it down here too. This one. These don't get as rusty as those black binder clips. I think over time they probably will, but for now they're not quite as rusty so they don't leave marks on my paper. Sometimes the marks are good. Sometimes not so much. So now I've got my little bundle and I'm probably going to do one or two more of these little bundles and then I will stack them in my pot and I've got my, this is my eco printing rock. <laughs> I will just set my rock on top of them. You know, I may kind of, you know, spread my bundles out like that. Put my rock down just so that I'm sure all the middles are getting good contact in there. And then put them, set them down in my steamer with the rock on top. And what I do is I steam them for about 15 or 20 minutes. And then I flip them over and steam them for another 15 or 20 minutes. So usually by about, you know, a total of between 40 minutes and an hour of steaming time, you've got really good prints. You know, they've kind of done all they're going to do. So, um, yeah, it doesn't take too long. So that's what I'm going to do. And uh, after they're through steaming for, you know, 30, 40 minutes, total then I will come back and we'll see what we got my little bundles steamed for a total of 40 minutes I flipped them halfway through and I've already peeked in this one just to uh, make sure we at least had something going on inside and we do so now I'm just going to go through and get rid of all of the plant matter that one did kind of nice I think I probably should scoot in a little bit let's get a closer closer uh, view there we go pretty good that was that Gerbera daisy and then on the back side this one really never does anything impressive but you know it's got a little something happening so I've got three bundles separate I've got a little this is a soft toothbrush that I sometimes use for cleaning and I'll use it to kind of brush off the plant goo paper towel a little bit I just don't want to do this with my paper towel because sometimes it'll smear and then it, it just it doesn't look good so there's that and this other little guy that doesn't ever do anything fun. I got a little bit out of him. Just a little bit. So now I'm going to go through. This was my uh, suede text bundler, whatever. I'm going to let that dry. And go through each one of these and see what we got. These are still a little bit warm, uh, just cool enough for me to be able to handle. I don't like to let them cool down all the way or dry out because the plant matter will sometimes just really stick to the paper and that irritates me. There we go. Nice print. I just want to be real careful not to tear my pages. Looks like that stuck a little bit, but that's all right. There's that one. That's interesting right there. I like, you know, because sometimes what's on the other side affects what you see here. So you just really, you just never quite know how it's going to turn out. And I like that. I like the surprise of it all. And I like 
not keeping them in this book form because you know you get the mirror image on each side and that makes me happy page. These turned out really good. Not a ton of color, just a little bit here and there. See that was one of those weird floppy purple blooms and I did get some purple in here. And there's a little yellow and green and so yeah those turned out great. And even that one did well. I got a lot of purple happening there. So what I'll do now is I'll just, you know, lay these out like this and let them dry a little bit more. And then I'll probably iron them to let them finish drying and then put them under some weight to flatten out. That's what I did with my other ones. Um, they are going to fade a lot when they dry because you know they look really intense and bright right now but when they're completely dry that color is going to really lighten up so be prepared for that and you know that's okay you still get the coolness let's just I'll go ahead and show you what we've got here that one I got a little blob of pink and that was that fluffy begonia that I like so well. And this one, I just had a random stick, random leaves, random bloom. They didn't all come from the same plant, but that's okay. can't really see what I'm doing. I see some, oh no, there it is. There. Got a little bit of kind of a bluish teal color over there. Oh, this was that, gosh, what was it? Dianthus, is that right? It had blue blooms on it. And that showed up a little bit there. A little bit of blue happening. And that's kind of cool. I've liked every one of these so far. There haven't been any like huge duds. Nope, even that one did really well. Ooh, both sides. Another uh, Gerbera daisy leaf. So yep, that one's good. And then the last one in this bundle, I didn't put much on there. I think this was just kind of the, yeah, that was that blue, whatever it was. I want to say Dianthus or Diane, I don't know, whatever. It had little blue flowers on it. This is definitely my favorite part, the reveal. This is that fuzzy red thing. It's printed mostly yellow, but still it's kind of cool. I think that was another uh, fluffy begonia. That begonia has, and I, I, don't, I don't know what that is. I don't care. Like I said, I'll just use what I've got, what I can get on sale. I am not too particular. Oh, cute. Oh, 
was that? I think that was one of those Sun Patients. It was pink, but it printed really purpley. Cute. I like that. Okay, that's that bundle. I can't, I wasn't going to just sit here and go through all of them, but I have to now because this is too fun and they're all turning out really, really good. So, I'm going to keep going. Just that one. Okay. Nice. Oh, that was a fuchsia. A fuchsia bloom. That just, we just had all kinds of weirdness going on here. Got a little um, blue from somewhere. Yeah, I don't know how it all works. It's magic. <clears throat> Depends on the plant and the mordant and the pH balance and just all kinds of stuff that I just can't be bothered with. <laughs> this one I even like. It's just got a lot happening from bleed through. It's really cool looking. Oh, yeah. Oh, we got pink coming through. I don't know if that's from whatever's underneath. But that looks good. Oh, yep. This one. That little, little hairy thing. <laughs> I got more color out of it than I did the last one. Fun stuff. So, you know, it won't be another maybe three days and I'll go back out there and trim my plants again because, you know, there'll be a few more dead ble dead bleeds, dead leaves and blooms. And I'll just take a few things off and then do this again. So, I really, that's what I've been doing about every, I don't know, maybe three days or so I just do another little bundle and the way I've been doing it you know steaming them and I've got my pot and everything all together it's no big deal and when I'm done with this batch I'll just put all of my you know parts and pieces back in my pot and set it aside until I'm ready to do another batch and then uh, I'll get done all I can while I've got stuff to use That one printed fairly well. It um, oh that was uh, that wasn't off of that purple plant that I said you know the blooms do well but the leaves don't. This was the um, I think this was uh, from the fluffy begonia. I think it was a leaf from the fluffy begonia. And this was that one that had all the red thingies and then some. Uh, that was from the Sun Patient. That um, it's kind of a dark pinkish red color, and it's printing a really nice blue. I don't have a whole lot of blooms left on it though. And then oh, that one, yeah, it had the they were dark red, and they printed kind of pinkish purplish. That's cool. Okay. This one is not too impressive. Oh yeah, I just had little, all those little dead brown leaves. 
Yeah, see, they still you still get a little something out of them. I think those were the pieces from the begonia. And another Gerber Daisy. I have printed with the actual bloom and it does well. They're a little bit thick, you know, in the middle, so I kind of squish the middle down flat so that it won't poke a hole in my paper. And it did just fine. It printed really well. Uh oh, got some paper sticking. Not a big deal. This one was the begonia leaf and that was that other plant. I think I took a picture of the plants. Um, if I remember I'll share that picture so you can see what some of them look like. But like I said, I really don't want you to get hung up on on the plants themselves, the types. Don't go running out trying to buy exactly what I use. Because it's, it's more fun if you just use what you have locally or what you can buy on the cheap and see what kind of awesomeness you can pull from that. That's more fun. Okay, last one. Nice. Got a little, little bright pink over here, which will not be so bright after these are completely dry. And I've tried several different methods of, you know, keeping the brightness. Um, so they don't fade so bad and there's really nothing that at least that I found that makes that big of a difference there we go there's that one usually does fairly well I think what I'm going to do is um, dry these. I won't bother waiting to flatten them. I'll do that overnight tonight. But when I get through here, I'll dry them and then uh, show you how they look after they're completely dry. I don't know what that was. It was dead when I put it in there, so it didn't... It didn't give up its ghost. <laughs> yeah, it just did nothing. And the, the type of paper matters too. And I don't know if you've been able to tell, but things that um, printed on the watercolor paper can be really different on the cardstock. Um, like here, this in the watercolor paper, this pulled out some pink. This one didn't. And it also depends on which way, you know, is the bloom facing up, is the bloom facing down. So, you know, you're going to get the front and back are going to look a little different. So, yeah, lots of variables, but, I mean, to me, that's what makes it fun. So, let me get these um, dried and ironed, which you don't have to do that. I just really happen to like ironing paper. So, um, I'm going to iron them whether they need it or not, and then I'll be back. I have ironed all my pages and I'm really happy with how all of these turned out. It, it was just good results overall. Tonight I'll probably put a, a heavy weight on them and leave them overnight so that they'll squish flat a little bit better. But let's just flip through 
so you can see what we got and you can probably tell that they have lightened up a little bit that's just what they do but even so they're still some of these prints are still pretty vivid so yeah I'm really happy with with the results and I like doing it like this like I said because then I've got like this completed little book at the end of it or if I wanted to I could um, take it apart you know to separate the pages and use them with other stuff I have options these look really good if you use them with some of your coffee or tea dyed papers you can use them in a journal or a layout or a whatever you want make a tag out of them or just do what I do and <laughs> just sit here and look at them and feel them <laughs> and flip through and talk about all the fabulous things you might do with them one day <laughs> uh, yeah okay that's that's where I'm at <laughs> But it was all about the joy of the doing. And it really wasn't a whole lot of effort. Um, you know, just doing small batches like this. And the steaming instead of the boiling is um, works a lot better for me. You don't get, you know, like when you boil, you can put rusty stuff in there. And you can get some different effects. You can put a, make a dye bath and you know get a little bit different stuff going on but the steaming is just fine you can still get very cool stuff with the steaming this is this is my favorite one i love this co cover and i like the the pink and the purple that happened there and then i like the <laughs> whatever that plant is <laughs> Yeah, there's good stuff happening in here. I even like this. Got purple and pink. So, that is um, today's eco printing batch. I hope that you will give it a try. I hope that you will use what you have around your house or go save some of those plants off the clearance rack at your local store that sells plants. And um, just see what you can see what you can get out of them. You can get some really cool stuff out of some really sad looking <laughs> plants and flowers. Trust me on this. <laughs> all right, that's all I've got, y'all. That's it. The end.